to Vascular Access Center. I'm Dr. Crenshaw, I'm a vascular surgeon. Um, a little bit about me, I am a native of Mississippi, but I've been living in New Orleans now for 16 years. I moved here actually one month before Hurricane Katrina. I did my surgical training at Ochsner Hospital and I did my vascular surgery fellowship at Ochsner Hospital. I've been employed by the Vascular Access Center now for seven years. Uh, I specialize in the creation of dialysis access and also specialize in the maintenance of dialysis accesses, meaning I uh, create the dialysis accesses and I help you keep your dialysis access going. My uh, job is to keep you as the dialysis patient out of the hospital, meaning that when you have a problem with your dialysis access, you come here to my clinic and I try and fix it so that you can get back to your dialysis center that same day. So once you arrive for your office visit, the first thing you do is you'll present to the receptionist desk. Hi. At your receptionist desk, you introduce yourself and our receptionist will you. take your name and take your identification and insurance card. So this is our lobby when you first walk in. Uh, we have a lobby with chairs for you to sit while you're awaiting your appointment. We uh, have you come by appointment so that we don't have a lot of people in the lobby when you come and so that you'll be able to quickly get back for your appointment. You'll come in and you'll be shown to this room where you'll change into whatever appropriate wear that you need to have on for your procedure or your office visit and you'll be able to Put your clothes here. You'll change into a gown and some footies. And then you'll be able to lock the door and you'll be given a key, which you'll have around your wrist so that you will be the only one who has access to the locker where you'll put your valuables. <laughs> Let me introduce you to the nurses here. This is Natalia, Courtney, and Christina. These are all uh, critical care trained nurses. Uh, they've been in the ICUs and in the emergency rooms for many years. So uh, these are our bays where we get you ready for the procedures. Each bay has a um, has a curtain where we can give you privacy while the nurses take your vital signs. We also have televisions here for you to watch while you are awaiting your procedure. So once you're ready for your procedure, then we bring you back through this door. And these are our procedure rooms. This is Jared. Oh. And no. this is Jared. He's our uh, x-ray tech and uh, first assistant. During our procedures, we usually have you come in. And this is a table where we usually do our procedure. We have you lay on the table. We have all of our monitoring equipment to help keep you safe during the procedure. And we have everything we need to do the procedure here, injure as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So let's talk about a dialysis access and an AV fistula. What exactly is an AV fistula? Well, an AV fistula is the way that you receive dialysis. It's usually a vein that is in your arm and very near the skin in your arm. We connect your vein to your artery. And when your artery pumps blood flow in your vein, it causes your vein to get large and thick and carry a lot of blood. And when it does that, then the dialysis center is able to cannulate which means get access to your dialysis access so that blood can go from your arm into a machine and all the toxins can be cleaned out and then it can be put back into your arm to circulate through your body. Let's talk about the steps to getting your dialysis access. Usually you will have seen your kidney doctor, which is also called a nephrologist who will be following your kidney function. And once your kidney function declines to a certain level, then your nephrologist will make a referral to your local surgeon, which is me. And my job is to place an access in your arm close enough to the skin where you can dialyze 
three times a week without any problems. So you ask, well, how did we do that? Kidney doctor will send me a referral and then you'll get a call from my clinic that will give you an appointment date to come and meet me. On that appointment date, there is nothing really special that you need to do on that day other than bring your identification and insurance cards. And we'll come in, you'll fill out some paperwork, and then we'll bring you back to our exam room and we'll perform a physical exam on you. We'll talk to you and we will talk to you about whether you're right-handed or left-handed. And the reason we do that is very important because we like to put your dialysis access in your non-dominant hand. And the reason for that is that if there are any complications, then you will still have full use of your dominant hand to write with and lift things with. So then you ask, well, how do you decide after you decide what's your non-dominant arm, how do you decide where exactly to put that dialysis access? Well, we do that by ultrasonography. Basically, we use this probe and we put it on your skin here and a picture of your vein will pop up on this machine. And I'll be able to see the size of your vein and the quality of your vein. We pass this probe along your skin and I'm able to look at the track that your vein takes in your arm all the way up to your shoulder. And once we're done ultrasounding your vein, we'll be able to tell exactly where in your arm to create your dialysis access. So usually we look at three places on the arm. The first place is right here at the wrist. The second place is right here in your elbow crease. And the third place is right here on the inside of your arm. The closest place to your hand where the vein gets the largest, we like to use that place first so that we'll be able to use multiple sites as you get older to create additional dialysis accesses. If we are unable to find a vein that is large enough to create a dialysis access, then we use something that's called a graft. The graft works much like a vein, but what we do with the graft is we tunnel your graft under your skin so that you can't see it, and we'll connect the graft right here to your artery. And then we connect your graft up under your arm where we know that the veins get really large. But the graft and the AV fistula are used in much the so, same way. Now that you've completed your initial visit and your physical examination, then it'll be time to schedule your surgery. There are two types of surgeries that you can get to have your dialysis access created, an open surgery or a percutaneous surgery. The percutaneous surgery is where we're able to create your dialysis access by basically starting an IV in your arm. If you do qualify for that procedure, we can either do it here in the office or in the operating room. The most common way to get a dialysis access is with open surgery. And that is always done either in the hospital or in outpatient surgical center. So what happens on the day of your procedure is that you will come to the hospital and you check into the hospital and they will do a preoperative assessment where they draw your blood and they check to make sure that your blood counts are normal. And a very important thing is to make sure that your potassium is normal. And there we will have the anesthesiologist to come and talk to you about how they are going to make you comfortable during the procedure. Now, we have a special way that we do our operations, which is a little different than the way that most people do their operations. Because we do these operations mainly in an extremity like an arm or a leg, we don't have to put you completely to sleep to do the operation. What we do is we put a little bit of numbing medicine under your collarbone here. And what that does is it goes down and it numbs the nerves that come out to your arm. And when it numbs the nerves that comes out to your arm, you are unable to feel any pain in your arm. In addition, your arm becomes very limp you're not able to move it much and it stays still during the surgery. Now, 
you're not awake completely during the surgery. We do give you a little bit of medication in your IV to relax you and so you're not so anxious. And many patients do drift off to sleep. But what's special about this procedure is that we don't have to put you under what's called general un anesthesia, where we have to put a tube down your throat and monitor. Specifically during the entire procedure, we're able to bypass uh, causing any problems with the heart and the lung by not putting you under general anesthesia. At that point, once you have had your preoperative assessment, then we take you back and the anesthesiologist perform that block that I just talked to you about. We take you back to the operating room. And depending on what part of your arm we are doing the procedure in, we make a small incision. Let's just say if we're doing it right here, we'll make a small incision, uh, about three centimeters long. And we will dissect down, which means we will kind of dig down and find your vein, kind of clear your vein away and bring it over and connect it to the artery. And once we're done with that, then we make sure that everything is flowing correctly and we make sure that you have good blood flow to your hand. Then we close up your incision and then once we close up your incision, then you come back out to the recovery room. So let's talk about after your procedure. Whenever you have a procedure, either here at our center or at the hospital, we need to make sure that you have someone that accompanies you to the procedure. And if they can't stay, make sure that there is someone who's able to drive you back home. When we give you anesthesia, whether we, um, put you all the way to sleep, which we usually don't do, or give you IV sedation, then you're not able to drive yourself for at least 24 hours. And also we recommend that you not drive yourself anytime you're taking any of the narcotic pain medications that we prescribe you. The arm uh, block keeps your arm numb from anywhere from 12 to 16 hours. So usually we're able to avoid any post-operative pain. We do send you home with pain medication because the arm block wears off, like I said, after about 16 hours. I give you enough pain medication to last you several days. Usually I see you back in clinic a week after I place your dialysis access. And when you come back, we do another ultrasound of your arm to make sure that the blood is indeed flowing like it should be in your vein. And we also look at your incision to make sure that your incision is healing correctly. When can I go back to work? Well, you can go back to work when you are no longer taking narcotic pain medication. And that is patient dependent. Some patients never take any narcotic pain medications and some patients require several days of narcotic pain medication. So it's kind of dependent on you. The second thing is that I would not like you to lift anything greater than five pounds or about a gallon of milk for the next six weeks. And the reason is we have an incision that needs to strengthen and heal. And so it takes about six weeks for you to get back to about 75% of the strength that your, skill, that your skin had before I made the incision. And that's about what you need to keep your skin from popping open if you pick up something heavy. After six weeks, then you're allowed to resume your normal exercise activities. Um, as soon as you're not taking narcotic pain medication, you can resume your cardio activities. So then the next question is, well, when will my dialysis access be ready and how do you know? At this point, you'll get to know me really well because I see you the first week after I create your dialysis access and then I see you every two weeks thereafter until your dialysis access is ready to use. So every two weeks we bring you in and we do an ultrasound and we monitor your dialysis access every two weeks to make sure that it is progressing along like it should. So what things are we monitoring? We're monitoring the size of your dialysis access. Every two weeks it should be getting larger and larger. We monitor the flow through your dialysis access, which should be increasing every two weeks. And we monitor the distance of your dialysis access from your skin. We sent a note to your dialysis access center to say that it is time to start using your dialysis access. If there are any problems with your dialysis access getting ready, then we treat that right here in the clinic with what's called a fistulogram. 
with the fistulogram, we're able to start a needle right in your dialysis access and shoot a little bit of dye into your dialysis access to look and see if there are any narrowings. If there are any narrowings or if your dialysis access is small, we'll able, we are able to stretch your dialysis access with a balloon to make it larger and to remove any narrowings. So I'd like to introduce you to another very, very important person in our practice and someone who will be a very important person in your life after you get your AV fistula. This is Jordan. Hey. She's our nurse practitioner. So she's very important because she's an extension of me. Although you'll meet me at your first visit, she'll be here all the time. Anytime I'm away at the operating room, then if you have a problem, then you'll come and talk to Jordan. She will also see you in a lot of your follow-up visits. Jordan.